Welcome back to the next episode of Carnivore Staples. Staples. What's good, everybody? Today we are going over bone, bone broth. broth. That was really ugly. Ready? <laughs> bone broth. One more time. Let's harmonize. Bone, bone broth. broth. Okay. Why eat bone broth? Early archaeological records show that our ancestors, so early Native Americans, um, they would actually crack the bones before they would stew them so the bones would release more and more nutrients into the soup. So clearly there's something behind this madness. And the bone broth has been used by our ancestors for such a long time it's, and it's been it's a staple of their diet. It's truly a staple, an OG carnivore staple. So another main reason to eat bone broth is for joint health, improved hair skin with all that collagen, to increase bone strength, all that phosphate, Phosphorus, magnesium, and calcium seeps out from the bones into the broth, and that's what you end up consuming. So it's kind of like eat the bones, a little multivitamin. To improve your bones. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we all know that there are a ton of nutrients in bone broth. One of the main ones is collagen. Collagen is like the glue that holds the body together. It strengthens strengthens the connections between the tendons, joints, muscles, bones. Bone broth is also loaded with some major key amino acids. So the first one being glycine, and you guys have already heard us talk about the very important methionine to glycine ratio, and consuming a bunch of muscle meat can really throw off that methionine to glycine ratio because muscle meat's heavy in methionine. So bone broth has a good amount of glycine in it. The other major key amino acid is glutamine, and glutamine is really important for making sure your gut lining is nice and sealed, nice and tight. So we don't want any gaps in the gut lining. So glutamine can help repair that, you know? It's probably why you always see on like leaky gut regimens to drink bone broth. And then of course it's loaded with a ton of vitamins and minerals and that's really gonna vary depending on the type of bones that you use, which is why we like to put in a wide spread of bones from different animals so that way you're covering a wider nutrient base. So you made some bone broth, but how do you know if it's actually good bone broth? And the key here is if it gets eggly, jiggly. If your bone broth don't get jiggly. Did it, did jiggle? it jiggle? No. No. So bone broth gets jiggly. If you put hot broth into the fridge and it let it cool, if it gets jiggly, it means that there's a good amount of gelatin in there. And all gelatin is, is the cooked form of collagen. If your broth isn't jiggly, it can still have a good amount of vitamins and minerals from the bones, but it's a good sign when it's jiggly, you know that you got your gelatin and collagen in there. All right, so tips to make sure that your broth has enough gelatin in it and to get that wiggly jiggly broth is to make sure that you're, you have enough collagen in your raw materials. So that's gonna come from things like tendons, uh, chicken carcasses, chicken feet, which is one of our favorites. So bones have a little bit, but it's best to include other Wide products. But, well, yeah, other products that have the collagen in it. You can also add heads, wings, wings tails, whatever. Skin, good. <laughs> and that collagen is extracted during the cooking process. So another thing you could do is add apple cider vinegar, which just helps extract that collagen from the uh, from the raw materials. We don't really do this though. No, because we put a lot of chicken feet in. So macros for bone broth are going to vary. So usually it's pretty much protein, I'd say like seven to 10 grams of protein per cup and maybe one to three to four grams of fat per cup, which is 240 grams. It, again, it just depends. on milliliters. Milliliters, it just depends on what you put into the broth, but you're gonna get some protein from that. All right, so now we're gonna show you how we make the broth. Let's go. All right, so we've got four tips for prep steps. So start saving all the bones. So marrow bones, save these marrow bones. We like to eat the raw bone marrow out of it. Save these bad boys. Save bones from the steak that you eat. This is from our chuck roast. Save them bones. Save chicken carcasses. Save them bones. Save all them bones. Save all them bones. The more bones you get from different animals, the more like wider nutrient base that you are going to cover. All right, so step, step or prep step two is to get a hold of some chicken feet. Y'all, these are super cheap, and then they're also gonna help you ensure that your bone broth's gonna get jiggly because there's a lot of collagen on these bad boys. If you didn't put chicken feet in your bone broth, does it jiggle? I don't know. Once you have all of these, uh, prep step number three is just gonna keep them in the freezer until you are ready to make your bone broth. That'll make sure that they stay high quality, you know? Um, but then, of course, when you are ready to make your bone broth, step number four 
is to let them sit in the fridge overnight, which is what we did with our bones. So they are now de-thawed and ready to make our bone broth. Let's go. Step one of making the bone broth, we are going to roast all of the bones at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And for this size crock pot, I don't know what size this is. For this size crock pot, we have about five to six pounds um, of bones. And we like to just, you know, season them a little bit with some sea salt before so tossing them in. Why and do you roast them? We roast them because it just adds a more like complex flavor to the bone broth. And because we choose to not add any like spices like garlic and stuff like that or vegetables to, say, uh, to add to the flavor, we find that like roasting the, the marrow bones adds a nice little robust flavor. Nice little Get vest. a little close up on these. How beautiful. So the meat on here, the connective tissue on these bad boys. Yeah, leave that all on there. All right, we're gonna toss them in. It's been about a half hour. We're gonna take these bad boy bones out. See how they are a little roasted? We're gonna take these bones out and just let them cool because go bur don't burn yourself, you know? So we should let that cool, about 15 minutes probably. Oh, I just wanna eat that meat right there. Mm. All right, once the bones have cooled down, we're gonna just load them into the crock pot. I like to put the big ones on the bottom. Make sure we can load these bad boys up. Okay, so now that you fit all the bones in there, we like to add the chicken feet. Let's get a close up, close up with these chicken feet. Beautiful chicken feet. So I, I add about five um, for each time. So five of these feeties. Look, gosh, look at this. Five of these feeties. And we're gonna fill it up with water, throw some sea salt in there, and then we will return in 24 hours. Always using that Redmond Real Salt discount code in the description. All right, we're gonna put it on low. Cover this bad boy up. See you in 24 hours, bye-bye. Tomorrow for sure. So it has now been 24 hours and I'm gonna do the fir first pull out of this bone broth batch. So what you guys are gonna need is a big old bowl to pour it into. You need a sieve, sieve, sieve. Wish we had a metal one, but this plastic one's just gonna have to do, and that's just to make sure that we're separating the liquid from all the other good goods. You know? And then we like to store ours in glass containers to avoid any xenoestrogens. So we've got these big old mason jars, and then a small one. So I'm gonna pour the strained broth into these bad boys. Let's do it. So here is the first round of the broth, and as you can see, the water level went down. I should have added a little bit more water, but that's okay. We'll be adding more for the next round anyways. So to get access this broth easier, I sometimes like to just pull this stuff out into a separate bowl to just make it easier to pour. So I'm about to do that now. So we've got one of these, I don't know. I don't know what they're called. But yeah, one of these and an extra bowl. So now it'll just be easier to just pour this. Let's just set this aside. Put this bed boy on top of here. Oh, it's a little too small. Mm. I need to say to hold this. Okay, I can do this. Very careful. Cannot waste any broth and is good good. Okay, we caught all of this yummy, meaty, gelatinous goodness that I'm gonna put back in here on top of the bones, add to the flavor. But now we've got all of this beautiful, beautiful broth. Beautiful broth, so I'm gonna let that sit in there as I refill this bad boy. Add all the bones back in, especially those big ones. Pour that yummy chunkage. And then one of the most important steps is to add more chicken feet for good measure, just to make sure that we have enough collagen for the next round. So I am again 
adding five more chicken feet to this bad boy. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, time to refill completely with the water. And of course, gonna add some more Redmond Real Salt. I'm gonna do a better job monitoring this over the next 24 hours to add water um, as some of it reduces down. And we'll put it back in the crock pot and we will see it again in another 24 hours. For the first round of broth that we got, we should put it in one of these big mason jars. Pro tip for storing, and that's because the fat in the broth and the liquid will separate as it cools. And so, therefore, we like to store ours see, upside down. And the reason for this is because the fat is gonna rise to the top here, and then you'll have easier jigglage access. So the jigglage you can just pull straight from, and the rendered tallow will be sitting right here. You all will see tomorrow, so that's one. Next morning. All right, so it is the next morning, and as you can see, the water line went down just a little bit. So before I pull the broth uh, later this evening, I'm gonna refill a little more water to get a little bit more of a turn, you know? And if you have a problem with like this bubbling up, uh, one thing that I like to do is just like put something like a pot down, and that like really keeps the lid on. So it doesn't bubble up or in like leak on the outsides. The next day. It is now for the eighth hours since we first put water in there, so this is now the second batch. And let's see what it looks like. So we're gonna take this pot off. And it looks like we got some good goods. So at this point in time, you have to make a decision. Are you gonna be adventurous and go for a third batch? So add a little bit more chicken feet, maybe take out some of the bones, put in different bones. It just depends on how much broth you want at a given time. So since there's only two of us, um, this broth should be enough for like a week or two and then I'll just make another batch. But if you're trying to get a big return on your bone broth, get the most bang for your buck time-wise, um, you can definitely add a few more bones, take out some of the, the bones that kind of look a little bit more white, um, add a little bit more chicken feet and definitely go for that third round. But I'm gonna call it quits here just because we don't need that much. So for straining the last batch, again, I'm gonna separate, like take all the bones out and then pro tip, save your chicken feet. Keep these bad boys. These are so good to eat and we will share how we eat these after. But oh my gosh, keep these bad boys. So I like to set these aside so that they don't get destroyed by the bones. Be gentle, be gentle with these bad boys. So we've got the second batch of the broth. We got all them bones, we got the chicken feeties, and then we got the like muscle meat scraps, and there's also some fat in there. Guys, save this, crisp it up on the cast iron. It's a delicious little protein crunchy snack. And then as for the chicken feet, um, you can eat them like this. The bones are super soft. Um, or we like to roast these in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes um, to just get them a little bit more crispy. Uh, at 400 degrees. So that's our favorite way to eat the, the chicken feet and it's a great source of calcium. All right, so just added batch two to the fridge and as you can see, we got a lot, a lot more return on the second batch because I remembered to add water about 12 hours into the second batch once the water line started to drop. But now we go and check out batch one and see if the jigglage was achieved, which I think you can tell it is quite jiggly. Let's see. Tallow or the fat is right here, but now we can open this bad boy up and have instant access to the jigglage, making it much easier to separate. Let me set this up. Guys, this is not easy when CC is not here. I'm gonna do this all on my own. Okay. So, open this bad boy up. Oh, you saw that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can y'all see that jigglage? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, so let's see. Let me take a little bit out. 
Uh, you can see there's still a little bit of like muscle meat scraps in there. That's totally okay. I mean, look at how crystal clear beautiful it is here. Meat jello that was achieved. Just like my tradition. Okay, I'm gonna set it up. Yes, I'm setting this up for myself. If you didn't get jiggly with bomba, did it really jiggle? And as for storage, bone broth can be stored in the fridge for about four to five days and then we like to put it in the freezer and then it can be stored in the freezer for a few months. But just as a note, it's not, when you defrost the bone broth, it's like a different jiggly consistency. It's like not the same as the, the, the meat jello that you get right out of the crock pot, which is understandable. But we like to consume our bone broth either cold with a bunch of salt, um, especially in the summer heat. It is so good as that meat jello. Um, or just heat it up in the microwave for like 30 seconds to a minute um, as a nice bone broth. So, yeah. Okay, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Carnivore Staples, how to make bone, bone broth. broth. Really appreciate spending our little bit of afternoon with you. Hope you enjoy. Let us know in the comments below what next staple you'd want us to review. Let us know also if you try this bone broth recipe or have any success getting your bone broth extra jiggly wiggly. Until next time y'all, behave like an angel.